What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. Sion's rework was one of the better updates to a champion Ryan has released in the past, and it was undoubtedly justified, since before the rework he was a really strange and awkward champion. Before the rework he went mostly unplayed, but there's an earlier version of Sion that most of us don't really appreciate. So join me today in taking a look back to find out just how good was Beta Sion. As well, here's some of my favorite comments from a previous video where I asked what your favorite thing about Bard was. Today's question is, what do you think about Beta Scion? And if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, and if you don't, please hit the dislike. Anyways, let's get started. So if you played back before Scion's rework, you'll likely remember that Scion pretty much always had two options in terms of his build. He could go AP and become this high burst, high wave clear mage with a little bit of tankiness, or go AD and become this melee carry bruiser with a lot of lifesteal. All the way back in beta, he still had those two different options within the parts of his kit, but the ability power portion was a lot more crazy than the attack damage portion. For those who don't remember, Sion's kit was clearly split into AP and AD halves. His Q and W scaled off of AP and did magic damage, and his E and ultimate were his attack damage abilities. The concrete split of the nature of those abilities is a big reason why he had such a weird kit, and during beta, he went through a few different phases. In the first part of the alpha stage, Scion's Q, which before the rework was a point and click stun dealing magic damage and scaling with AP, and had a 2.2 second duration on the stun. And his Q and W both had 1.0 AP ratios. And his ultimate would cause him to gain maximum health every attack, while also gaining 45% attack speed too. However, on the May 9th, 2009 patch, he would get a rework that saw his ultimate change to heal himself and surrounding allies at the ridiculous rate of 50% of the damage dealt at rank 3, and apart from some base stats buff, this was where we saw the incredible absurdity that was AP Scion. Apparently AP Scion wasn't dealing enough damage, so his W was given a 200% AP ratio, and keep in mind this was an area of effect ability, and although at the time it did have a longer cooldown, his Q still had a 1.0 AP ratio with a 2 second targeted stun. His W ratio would go on to get cut in half, but then again he received a buff that saw an increase to his Q base damage and his W base damage and an increase to his W's AP ratio to 1.2, and not long after his W received a huge cooldown reduction too, and again he became a huge AP burst damage monster, with a simple but insanely powerful combo, tankiness, and wave clear. Finally, Ride would come to their senses and nerf him quite a bit, especially his W, and the stun duration would get lowered, as would his AP ratios and his cooldowns, and the damage would take hits too. And with all that said, the thing that I like to think about the most when looking back at beta champions like this is really, how good would this version of Scion actually be if he was put into the game today? A lot of us talk about the beta champions and say, oh my god, that guy was so crazy. But there's a lot more champions than you might think from the beta where even if you put them in the game today, they would actually be underpowered. Since at the time, the meta was underdeveloped, so certain champions succeeded or failed more severely than they might today. The best way to do this is probably to make a comparison. So let's compare this beta AP Scion to a version of a season 6 champion in the game today, Annie Mid. Annie's a good comparison because she has the kit that is probably the most similar to AP Scion, I mean she has the targeted stun, lots of burst, but also the similar weaknesses of being immobile and short ranged. Now Scion was tankier than Annie is now because he gets a shield from his W, and his passive gave him a chance to ignore a flat amount of damage from basic attacks too. He also had much better wave clear than Annie did, and a more reliable and longer lasting stun. But on the flip side, his burst combo was a little bit slower than Annie's. You couldn't just pop it off on someone instantly, since you had to get in range for your W, which left you open to cleanse, maybe being disengaged, unlike Annie where you can just flash in on someone and just unload everything instantly. But how does the damage compare? Well, it's a little bit unfair for Scion since he only had two damaging abilities, while Annie has three, so let's compare the two champions at level 13. By that point, both champions have their two basic damaging abilities maxed out. Annie's combo today at level 13 would deal a total of 770 base damage with a combined total of a 245% AP ratio, while Scion's combo would deal 600 base damage but a total of a 300% AP ratio. 
so it's the trade-off of 170 base damage versus a 55% AP ratio, meaning Beta Scion would need 310 ability power to do more damage than Annie does now at level 13. Now at level 16, Annie gets a little bit more of an advantage with the third rank in her ultimate, but in the late game with a full build, Scion would definitely be dealing more damage since you're going to have more than around 600 AP for the most part. But in the early game, his burst would maybe deal a little bit less damage than Annie's does right now. And on paper, that doesn't actually sound that good, but Annie's burst includes her ultimate, which of course has a really long cooldown, and as well in the early levels, Scion was just insane. Imagine going some kind of cheese build with full flat AP and runes, and maybe an amplifying tome as your starting item. And on Scion, your W could be hitting for as much as 150-200 damage right from the start at level 1, with the 2 second targeted stun as well, and Scion gets access to his full burst combo as early as level 2, whereas Annie has to wait a few levels to get level 6 to get her ultimate. And if you take away the ultimate from the damage comparison, Scion would be dealing around twice as much or even more damage than Annie would. So with that said, we can look at Scion as honestly an Annie on steroids with an insane early game. Now is that actually good though? I mean, Annie has a positive win rate and she's definitely not underpowered. So Annie on steroids, yeah, you have to admit, would be pretty damn strong. And I wouldn't be surprised if you put this version of Beta Scion into the game today that he might actually be the best champion in the entire game. Maybe not by a lot, but he definitely would be overpowered for sure. And although I didn't talk too much about AD Scion, because in beta that part of his kit was actually kind of underpowered, and in later patches when Scion had his AP ratios take hits, the AD portion of his kit actually received buffs. But that doesn't mean that part of his kit was non-existent. It would still give him some okay sustain damage and a whole lot of lifesteal in fights for sure meaning that he could really make use of hybrid items like Ginsu's Rage Blade, on top of just bringing mad AP burst. So how good was Beta Scion? Well, it turns out that he's probably one of the more underrated beta champions. When people think about the beta and what was overpowered, they think about Twisted Fate, you know, Blitzcrank with his 5 second AoE silence, Jax with his crazy dodge scaling, but maybe Scion fits in line with one of those crazy beta champions. And that's just about it. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.